Welcome to The Note, I'm Brian. Could Sony be working on a new portable? Now that might seem nuts given the lackluster response to the PS Vita, but there are signs out there that Sony might get back into the handheld market. Well, one sign, it's a little sign, but it's still interesting. The site Techtastic found a new design patent that shows off a game cartridge design that Sony Interactive Entertainment filed for in South Korea. We don't know any other details about it at this point, but just its existence, it's a game cartridge, probably not for a PlayStation, that is pretty interesting. Now the Vita, which I personally love, only sold about 16 million units. It was generally considered a disappointment. Sony basically stopped talking about it ages ago, but given the success of the Switch, they might be enticed to dip their toes into the portable water again. We got early sales numbers for Battlefield 5. They are not looking good, at least compared to its predecessor. Eurogamer reports that during its first five days, Battlefield 5 sold less than half the physical copies that Battlefield 1 sold during its launch week. And if you compare Battlefield 5 to Black Ops 4, its big competition, Battlefield 5 also sold less than half of what Black Ops 4 did. So again, we're talking about physical copies, not a great sign though for Battlefield 5. Maybe people are holding out until its Battle Royale mode releases, not clear yet. It looks like the Game Awards is going to have a ton of announcements when it kicks off next month. Its creator, Jeff Keighley, tweeted today that more than 10 new games, oh, I love new game announcements, more than 10 new games will be announced for the first time during the show. We'll also get updates for existing games too, so suffice it to say there will be a lot of news broken during the show. I can't wait. It will be streamed live on December 6th. Reviews, they're starting to come in for the PlayStation Classic. They seem... Pretty tepid. It doesn't look like Metacritic or OpenCritic have compiled the reviews, but just looking around the internet, IGN gave it a 5.5 out of 10, CNET gave it a 7.5 out of 10, TechRadar and PC Mag both gave it a 3 out of 5. Of course, we've heard a lot of complaints about the 20 game lineup, leaving out some classic titles, but some reviewers also found issues with the games that were included. GameSpot criticized it for having frame rate issues and a lack of options for its emulator like adding anti-aliasing or changing the native resolution. Its reviewer wrote, the PS Classic will give you a false negative impression of what PlayStation games should look like. That is not good. Even if you don't want to go to the trouble of playing with a real thing, you can always emulate games on a slew of devices, including a PS3, and have a far better experience than the PS Classic offers. TechCrunch, though, said that games like Metal Gear Solid, Final Fantasy VII, and Tekken 3 still held up. It wrote, in a lot of ways, playing games on the PlayStation Classic was like watching a classic film. You may snicker at first at the primitive special effects or graphics, and sometimes the old clothes, hairstyles, or acting may be hard to take seriously, but that's the easy response. If you're willing to dig, you'll find plenty of rewards under the surface. The PlayStation Classic retails for hundred bucks, goes on sale December 3rd. All right, it's no secret that the holiday shopping season is huge for gaming companies. And with December almost here, Nintendo of America president Reggie fils said in an interview that the season is critically important for Nintendo. And he gave one stat that really underscored just how important the holiday shopping season is for them. He told Yahoo Finance that Nintendo does 60% of its business in the Americas during the months of October, November, and December. He added, the reason that it's so significant is first, our products make great gifts. Whether you're talking about Nintendo Switch, whether you're talking about Nintendo 2DS, we really do well with that gift giving occasion. I love how he just slipped an ad in there. Reggie is such a pro. Of course, it's a big time for all other console makers too, but given the sales of Pokemon Let's Go and the pre-orders for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, looks like things are looking good for Nintendo right now. Is Parasite Eve making a comeback? QA tester Andrew Marmo found that Square Enix has trademarked the name in Europe. We don't have any other details yet, and companies do these kind of filings all the time, but it could be a hint of something. The franchise, it's been dormant for a while now after the initial game and a sequel dropped in the late 90s. There was a third game that released for the PSP in 2010, but we haven't had anything since. I would love another Parasite Eve game. 
Microsoft recently released its adaptive controller for Xbox players with disabilities, and now one handy YouTuber got it working on another console. The Verge reports that the YouTuber My Mate Vince got the controller going on a Switch thanks to a $20 wireless controller adapter. Of course, there was more tinkering involved. There's remapping the controls, calibrating joysticks, but by the end of the video, he's using the controller to play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. He only got second place though. Get your Mario Kart game up, dude. But still, good work. All right, it's no secret that Fortnite is really popular, but apparently some parents are saying enough is enough. Bloomberg has a story about some parents sending their kids to rehab because they're playing too much Fortnite. Of course, we've gone through this before with games like League of Legends and World of Warcraft, while there's a huge outcry about addiction over a popular game. The article didn't give any hard numbers on people seeking treatment for their children, but it did quote a British behavioral specialist, Lorreen Marrer, who compared the game to heroin and said, once you are hooked, it's hard to get unhooked. Wow. And a lot of pro athletes they're apparently playing too. Apparently the Vancouver Canucks banned the game on the road because they were having trouble getting players to meetings and dinners. That is crazy. All right, that is all the news we've got for you today. Let us know what you think about all these stories down in the comments below. I read them, I comment. I hope y'all were nice to John yesterday. For all your news from every corner of the internet, like this video, subscribe to The Know, hit us up on our website, theno.tv. <laughs> you gotta get hit. That is not good. Even if you don't want to go to the trouble of playing the real thing, sending their kids to rehab because they're playing too much Fortnite. Of course, we've gone through this before with Gideon. Of course, nah.